So, 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 so you said that Stan is how many fucking planks? What, 176 planks 100, of wood? 175 sheets of plywood, yes. And a kilometre of fiberglass cloth and a thousand litres of resin, epoxy resin. <laughs> Um, seven cubic meters of cowrie. We got the last shipment of cowrie oh, wow. out of Northland. The last legitimate shipment of cowrie being built into this. The last legitimate shipment of cowrie. So this is like yeah, they won't ever do it again. With compliments of Tani Mahuta. Yes, yes. I'll be visiting him when I go up and see him. Daga, we'll go and visit Granddad. We honour him <laughs> on the way in the shed. There, there's a picture of Tani Mahuta. You like Tani? Yes, yes, yes. I got a, I've got a really good story to tell about Tane, actually. Ah. Yes. And this is the chaps. This is the this is the what up here that you guys can't see, or if you can hear me. But this is one of the rock, rock arts and symbols which is associated with the Waitaha. Yes. Which is basically early New Zealand uh, indigenous, pr even pre prior to the Maori. Non-weapon so bearing. Non-weapon bearing. This has been an interesting one because you know our historians will sort of try and make it up that the Maori's all arrived in seven paddle canoes, and you know this is absolute nonsense because these are the designs. You could go to Frankfurt uh, museums in Frankfurt, and there's actually sketches of what the original rigs look like the Waka. So that's a huge misrepresentation of, of what actually happened. You see these on the Chatham Islands. We now can document the the. Basically, the, it's accepted that the the Moriori or the uh, which would have been Waitaha people as well were were there and were wiped out beforehand. And this is on East Island. This chap, obviously, minus the snorkel, but um, you know the, the deal is this is a monument towards also the other aspect of the Chatham Islands, which was all part of the Waitaha lesson was the two tribes that went to war and they effectively environmentally wiped out everything on the island. And when they realised they couldn't do it anymore, they made a peace treaty saying basically we're not going to go down this road anymore and it, it lasted 600 years until the Maoris were brought over on European schooners and basically massacred. There was, what did you say, 300 people in one day? First day, 300 people. First day, 300 people, non-weapon bearing, didn't attempt to resist them, just wiped out. And of course this is all happening again today, but this time we're using pens and lawyers instead of buskets. <laughs> Over 400 people signed the visitors' book here, all around the world. Yes. All 19 nice. years of work, and it's $200,000, and it's only $200,000 away, which is really not that much when you consider the America's Cup, which is obviously Stylager, but now is the Arab Cup. It's interesting. New Zealand, the ocean-based country working for a sand-based country. Go figure. So oh, that statement right there. And then the last thing is our tools that we were shown beforehand. Yeah. This is this is what our Waitaha people were using to build these amazing boats that would have blown anything the Europeans out of the water back then. And you're talking about hmm. four four hundred AD, do you reckon? Oh, uh, it's, it's up to fifteen, sixteen hundred years ago. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So you know, hmm. and all these technologies, you know, there's plenty of of today archaeologists. The, the Kontiki is another example showing that these rigs did exist and that they were viable. Oh yes. Cook writes about them. You know, three times the speed of a ship and a little bit of bit of a hoo ha they had over there. So this is all this is none of this is conspiracy theory. This is all accepted history that comes from mainstream history, but they just selectively chose not to mention that when they talk about it in their main page newspapers. And on that note, we'll leave do you have a name for her? Yes, Southern Laughter. Southern Laughter. Yes, because the, of the laughter in the shed. The Wizard of, of New Zealand uh, talks about, I've had him on the show, and he talks about the need for a fun revolution. Yes. Yeah, and, uh, you know, there's no point turning around picking up guns because it just gives the state power to drive through you. If you want to challenge him, you challenge him with laughter. Yes. One of the complaints we had in the resource consent hearing from our part-time neighbours next door was that they were annoyed by the sound of laughter from our boat shed <laughs> and you're allowed to make 65 decibels of noise at your boundary so after we'd had this complaint I got a noise meter and we had 12 people in the boat shed laughing their hardest and they could laugh 45 decibels at the boundary so we called it southern laughter from then on <laughs> yes